great about that, other than trying to help people who are in a state of confusion. Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. My name is Jim Hacking. This is episode number 521 of the Immigration Answers Show. This is our last show of the week. We will not be doing another show the rest of the week, maybe on Saturday, but maybe not. Um, we've been switching over to Salesforce this week, and it's been a week. Tomorrow I get to hear from operations about how frustrated they are with our transition. So we got to got to get things moving for them. Uh, it is a big transition to switch from two different kinds of software to one new one, uh, even one as powerful as Salesforce. We are excited about that. I had fun this morning. I spoke to the international students at Chicago State University, Chicago State University, and I had the pleasure of telling them that by the end of this year, we will be opening our fourth office in Chicago, Illinois. It'll be our, our first one in Chicago, but our fourth one nationwide. So we are excited about opening an office in Chicago. Um, and we hope to help a lot more people. We really like the Chicago Immigration Office. Um, we even liked the Chicago Immigration Court when we were doing deportations. We're glad that we're not. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Jay Cruz is in North Dakota, says it's 28 degrees here, a nice change from minus 30 a week ago. For sure. I'm wearing shorts today. Last week it was two degrees here, minus two. So it's it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Um, I saw people asking in the comments. Hope was kind enough to chime in about the link. If you want the link ahead of time, you should join our text line 314-470-3300. That way you'll get alerted to the, you'll, you'll get in the waiting room first. I just started the show and I think the waiting room is already full. There probably will be somebody complaining about it in the comments in just a minute. Um, Vadim says Shabazz should be our secretary in the new office. Well, we'd have to, have to open an office in Houston for old um, Shabazz because he's in Houston and he's busy driving. You know that. Um, oh, Nurse Laura says she's going to Chicago for the first time. Well, it's a great town, great place to be. Um, great, great place to be. We got Sinus in Seattle, Ahmed in Minnesota. Muneers asked me about the Texas law. I don't have any time. I don't have time to be paying attention to that fool Greg Abbott. That guy is something else. No, I haven't spent any time thinking about that. Um, somebody's asking me. Oh, all right. Um, Wichita, Kansas in the house. Palm Bay, Florida, Sacramento. It's 59 in Sacramento. It's 80 where Selena is. I don't, oh, in Palm Bay, Florida. Well, I'll be going to Florida in a couple of weeks for just a few days to hang out on the beach and to relax. It too's here in Detroit. Detroit was a nominee for a new office, so stay tuned for Detroit. But Chicago is where it's at sometime this year. Now, if you know anything about Chicago and you have suggestions about where in the Windy City we should put our office, we're having a little bit of an internal debate. Some argue that we should be right by USCIS downtown, which is easy to get to from Midway, which is where we would most likely be flying into. Others, like my wife, say we should go on the north side where she grew up. And there's even argument that we should be out in Bridgeview, out off 55. Um, and we uh, we did scout an area out there a while back, which I really liked. Danny's back watching a live show. All good stuff. All right. So we're going to get started. I'll be here for the next 55 minutes to answer your immigration questions. And then I'll be heading out into the rain. How about that? Let's start this show with Siren. Hello, Siren. You're on mute. You're on mute. Hey, so um, I found your um page over in YouTube, and I've uh, been curious about this. Um, yeah. Um, this isn't enough for me, but this is for my mom. So I already started the process of uh, petition of my brother alongside with her. Um, obviously she doesn't speak English. She's new in states. So anyway, moving forward, um, it, all the paperwork are done now. It's on the NVC, and there are two of them. One of my brother. When she filed the petition as a green card holder, one is already out the out um 
no longer okay. 21 and then the other one is under 21. okay yes so now she's approaching um five years here in the u.s and she would like to take her citizenship and so i tried to contact my lawyer and they still haven't responded for me in the last two months now and so my question is would that will take an effect of the petition if she take um you know an oath and process her um citizenship while she processes the petition as a green card holder so mom has applied for her adult son who has two kids of his own is that what you're saying yeah so my yeah my mom mm -hmm. yeah my mom um applied for um for a petition to um to my brothers let's leave you out of this let's okay. leave you let's so okay. we have a green card holder mm -hmm, which is my mother she, Right, and she has two sons. Mm -hmm. And how old are they? So when she filed the petition, no, how old of, are they right now? Um, so right now one is twenty-two, and then the other one is twenty-three. Okay, and how do you know that they, that one aged out but one didn't? Have you um, done the calculation? My, yeah, because um, my lawyer to, um, because my lawyer um updated me with that, and when we filed it, my bra um. The other son were only 19 at that time, and then the other one were already 22. I mean, tw I think, no, wait, sorry, the math, um, sorry, 22, and and then he's 25 now, sorry. So, I'm to I'm yeah. Confused. I'm sorry. confused, Aaron. sorry, it's okay. Um, um, so when we filed the petition, I believe one was, one were 19, and then the other one were 23. And so one, then, was, one was clearly over 21 when we started. Hmm. One was definitely over twenty-one when we started. Yes, yes. One were one one of them. We're already twenty-one okay. above. And what's the priority date for mom? Um, two thousand eighteen. Mom filed in two thousand and eighteen. Yeah. So they're still they're still three years away on the F two B category. If she becomes a U.S. citizen, and they're unmarried, right? Yes, they're both unmarried. Then they go to the F1 category, which is a little bit worse. It's worse by like 10 months. So it's probably not going to make much difference um, if if she if she becomes a citizen. You can ask to be categorized, continue to be categorized as a green card holder, not as a citizen. So, you know, I'm not the lawyer. You should definitely clear it from the lawyer. I'd want to look at all the dates. I'm not sure who's aged out, who isn't. But basically what you're asking me is, is it okay for a green card holder who's sponsoring adult children to become a citizen? And generally it's yes, because they can ask to be treated as a green card holder for purposes of the, of the son's cases. Okay. I, I see. All right. And you said that um, the other one is on the F1 category. So that'll be three years from now, but yeah, they're both um, over 21 now. Cause yeah, but there's a whole calculation you have to do to see if they aged out because you get to subtract all the time, if they were under 21 at the time the case started, you get to subtract the time that the case was pending at USCIS. So the younger one might not have aged out. Yeah, well, um, according from my lawyer, he's still covered on that law. No? Uh -huh. Yeah, because um, when we filed it, he was only 19. And then obviously, I mean, the process takes a long time. So he is over 21 now. But the lawyer said that he will always be covered in that law. I believe you, but I, I'd want to, like I said, before I give you a final answer, I'd need to see everything myself, but I think just, just rely on your lawyer. Yeah. No, they haven't responded to me in the last two months after everything is filed at the NBC. They said, just wait until the immigration called them for an interview. So well, I mean, I and I understand that it's, it's, it's three years away. So I understand that. Yeah. So thanks, Siren. yeah, thank you. See ya. All right. All right. That was Siren. Let's go to Search. Search and Siren. What's up, Search? Oh, hey, Jim. How are you doing? Thanks for I'm having me. How are you doing? Not too bad. Thank you. So I got a question, Jim. Um, if I'm on a TMB set that expired, but you know, with a valid I-94, uh, if I were to change employers to uh, I-129 uh, mm -hmm. with USCIS, um, if it gets approved, if the change of employer gets approved, how long do, do I have to uh, do I have to stop working for my current employer immediately, or how does that uh, is handled? Why? What are you trying? Why? Why wouldn't you leave? Uh, no, I'm just trying to see because I, I never done a, a change of employer. I usually just go through a visa stamp. 
Right. But if you have one TN, you can only work for one employer at a time. So I, I, I don't understand the purpose of the question. Uh, no, because I'm just uh, curious if, uh, if, if it gets approved, then do I have to leave immediately the job or? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the whole point. Got it. Uh, and, and just another question around that is, uh, as Mexicans, a young Mexican, uh, can we request uh, to go through this process through CBP, like Canadians, or, or nope. we just can? Nope. Okay. Yep. It's a racist part of NAFTA that they treat Canadians differently than Mexicans, I believe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks. Thanks for. Uh, Bye, Search. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. You got it. All right, all right. Mr. Cool is here. How could I not talk to Mr. Cool? What's up, Mr. Cool? How are you doing, Mr. Jim? Good, but I can barely hear you. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Mm hmm Sort mm -hmm. of. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you. And secondly, I appreciate everything you do for the immigrants in the United States. Thanks. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Yo, Mr. Jim, my question is, I got married with U.S. citizens since 2018. And I got my 10-year green card, 2022. 20, and me and my wife, we've been married. We've been filing our taxes together all these days. But right now, <laughs> she told me this January, we're not going to fight together. Why? I don't know. She said she need more money. And secondly, um, my I supposed to qualify for my neutralization next year, twenty twenty five. On the three year rule or the five year rule? What to say? Are you applying for citizenship on the three year rule because you're married to a U.S. citizen, or the five year rule? Yeah, I go. I got married twenty eighteen. If I got my green card 2022, so I want to file for my citizenship in three years after I got my 10 years green card. Well, I'll I'll, I'll say here's a new rule: if if she's gonna file separate taxes, then you should wait. Then you should wait five years. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Jim. That is what I, I I want to know because right now we fight together. Last year, I told her we should fight together this year and next year so that I can file my neutralization next year 2025 but she said no well as as h&m says she needs to decide which is more important is it that she wants money or that she wants you to get your citizenship because it seems like she can't have both okay okay thank you so much mr jane if, Bye, she, mr. Cool. if she don't if she don't if, she, if we don't fight together that means i'm gonna wait for five years it's not it's not a, a uscis rule it's a gym rule it's like if if because to, to me, that's the first, the first sign that there's something wrong with the marriage, and that's going to cause USCIS to inquire into it and to dig into it. And so, I think you're better off waiting five years. You don't have to, but I would. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Jim. I really appreciate you. Okay. Bye, Thank Mr. Cool. Bye. bye, buddy. I never saw anybody do what Mr. Cool did. He was talking to me. He put the mic in his mouth and he kept talking. That was pretty cool. I've never. I've never seen somebody do that before, but I don't usually have those. You know, I got AirPods, so that was pretty cool. Andre's here. Hello, Andre. Hi. How are you? Thank you for taking the call. I appreciate sure. it. And thanks for, for all the help. It's a little confusing because there's YouTube uh, stream and uh, this chat stream, and they're a little bit different. So yeah, I think, once, I, saw, I think once you get, I think once you get into the waiting room, it's better to just turn off YouTube and watch me. Yeah, from here. So. What's up? <laughs> okay, so I'm on the green card, and recently I married a girl from Russia who has a eight-year-old daughter. So the main question, main task is to bring them over as soon as possible so that we can just live together. Uh, with that, <clears throat> I'm thinking there's uh, one route is uh, I'm going to file all the forms as a green card holder and wait that. The other was I was thinking maybe we can try to do like a student visa or like travel visa or something <coughs> like that. Um, travel probably not really going to work that well because there's nothing really uh, 
she doesn't have like a lot of attachment, right? And I would love to, uh, for them both to come. Is she so in Russia, taking... Russia? She's in Russia, <laughs> Russia? Yeah, she's in Moscow. She's uh, she's from Belarus. So she, she has citizenship Belarus and Russia. Yeah. Um, so I think I you're right. Thinking... I, think, I think you're right. I don't think she's getting a visit visa. Right, right. So I was, th I was thinking about the student visa because eventually, so like, and I was wondering what are the chances on that? Because the idea is she needs to to learn English anyway, right? So I was thinking maybe do the, like the English class and this English school courses and stuff. She's to gonna what, need to work here and learn learn the truth anyway. To right? what end? Did she get the the if she got came for English, then what would she keep in? Well, I mean, first of all, how old is she? Twenty seven. How long has it been since she's been in school? Uh, like six years. So I think that cuts down on the chances of getting the F one. Um, I think they might give her. I think they might give her an F one, but maybe not to the kid because they want to make sure she comes back. But I don't think I don't think she's getting a visit visa or an F one. I think the chances of either of them are like ten percent. Right. So that was my question. I was thinking. I mean, the idea is to prove that like there's no immigrant intent, right? But there's definitely immigrant intent. But I was thinking, what the um, is the logic? Is there a logic being that like? We want to immigrate, but for that we're doing this uh, like marriage application and everything. But like for F one, we really just—I mean, literally need to study, like get English, and then like transition yeah. the profession, you know, in in this uh, industry. So first, first of all, let's not ever admit that there's definitely immigrant intent. Okay. Well, so I mean, let's, that's the point. Let's never, let's never admit that. Okay, <laughs> until until we absolutely have to. So I think I think I I would frame things a little bit differently, and I want to ask you a few questions first, Andre. Okay. Yeah. First is, how did you get your green card? Right. So I got my green card uh, through asylum, but it was my ex-wife who was in asylum, and I was like secondary or whatever the thing, right? The, it's, the whole thing was was like 13 years or something. So it's been like a couple of years since, uh, since we divorced. Okay. All right. And the person that you want to marry, have you, have you, did you know them before you knew your wife? No. Did I know before I knew? Wait, yeah, like, the person like, like sometimes people know this, know, know the lady that you want to marry now. Like they knew her, like even before they knew their their wife here. No. So, so the girl in Russia, we already married recently, beginning. Oh, January. you're married. Yeah, yeah. I've oh, been then there's no way in hell you're getting a student visa. No. No, because on the DS-160, she'll have to admit that she's married to a green card holder, and there's no way in hell they're going to give her a student visa. Ah, okay. So no point in even trying. Right. So how old is your green card? So, okay. So that's not uh, another question, kind of also tangential, sort of. Uh, I see that it was issued March, 20, March 21st. Of? Uh, of in March in 2021. Mar March of 2021. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so... Since it was like asylum in a real long time, they count one year toward it, right? So there's five year, right? So March 25th? No, no, no. They So when did they actually approve asylum? In March of 21 or March of 22? Approve asylum as in the court hearing? Um, or... I'm sorry. When did they approve the green card? Sorry. When did they approve the green card? They pro the approval came in March of 22, and they backdated it at one year, right? No. no. So, uh, okay. So I remember because it's been so long, so long ago. And actually, I was on your show before, on your show before asking because there was a court hearing. We got approval. We waited a year. We applied for green card, right, with my ex, and then we waited for green card for like 33 months. Yeah. I came to your to your show, yeah. asked you, is that a normal? You said no, pseudoship. Sorry, <laughs> the hell out of them. And in about a, uh, a month or so, we got a notification that like approved uh, approved for green card, and then like another month or so, we got a green card. So, and what, then, so do you have? Do you have the green card with you? Yes. What's the start it, date on the green card? Uh, March twenty twenty one. Okay, so you don't get to take another year off that. You have to wait five years from March of twenty twenty one. Since yeah um, yeah, bummer. So, the, so what I would do if I were you is I would file the I-130 for your wife and I would file an I-130 for the kid. Now, because you're a green card holder, because you're a green card holder, you could technically just apply for the mom and add on the kid as a derivative. But the only, the, the only way, the fastest way for her to come is for you to become a citizen. 
So she's not going to come until you're a citizen because <laughs> the backlog right now for spouses of green card holders is like four years. Well, you'll become a citizen before then, and then you'll upgrade your case. But if you haven't filed a separate I-130 for the kid, then you're starting over at that point and you don't want to do that. You want both of them on file now. You file for them as green card holders. You file one I-130 for each kid. And then when you become a citizen, you notify them in each case that you've become a citizen. And so to be clear, it's going to be another two years to become a citizen or more, right? So if, if so, it's 2021... So if, the date, if the date on your green card is correct... In, in that in that it's one year after the approval date so when you when you get a green no, card no, no, but no no but i'm pretty sure yeah it's one yeah it's uh no it's but what counts as approval what date counts as approval when i got identification that oh did you are yeah. you frozen no um, i was just thinking <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> So, okay, so here and then one year after that we applied, then three, year, three years we waited. So I got a green card after three years. There's no year going towards that? What's supposed to happen is when they issue you your green card based on asylum, if they, if they say on March 10th, 2022, that you're approved, the start date on the green card should be March 10th, 2021. Okay, and then is there a year applied towards it as a kind Stop of like that? That's all it is. That's all it is. That's there's only one. There's only one one year benefit, not two one year benefits. Still confused. What? So, just think of it like this: most people, when they get their green card, the day it's approved is the date on the green card. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. But for people who get it through asylum. It looks back one year. Okay. So you get a green card that's one year older than everybody else. If if you got approved for a green card and someone else got a green card on that day for marriage, theirs would say March 15th, 2022. Yours would say March 15th, 2021. That's the only benefit. There's nothing else that you get special because of asylum. So you get to apply for citizenship one year earlier than that person. Okay, I'm, I'm still confused. <laughs> so here's what uh, we'll do. Send me the approval notice, send me a copy of your green card, and I'll tell you the day that you can apply for citizenship. Approval notice. Approval notice I can find somewhere on USCIS? Wow, that's, it, it should have uh, mailed it to you before you got yeah. the green card. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while ago. On it. Okay. All right. Okay, or, com or, come back, or come back with that information. I can tell you over the phone. Got it. So what you're saying is apply as a green card holder, then become a citizen, then upgrade. But realistically, what I'm looking at, it, it's going to be like two, three years until all of that happens. It's. I mean, you can apply for citizenship three months early. So four years and nine months from the start date on your green card. And yeah. then it's probably, I mean, when you get when you get your green card based on marriage and derivative and you're from Russia, you're probably talking about a year for citizenship. Mm -hmm. And then once you become a citizen, you upgrade. And I still think you'll beat. I still think you'll beat just processing as the spouse of a green card holder. Okay, and then uh, related question then. So with the green card, what is the? It's a little bit confusing about the uh, how they calculate how much can I be absent from country without uh, breaking what's it? What they call it? Like abandoning. Uh, continuous residency yep continuous re yeah there's some about six months but how do they calculate six months is it like six months in total in a year or is it six months straight no it's si it's six months solid six months solid but you, you there's two things you need to be careful of and so you're in you're in a tricky spot so on the day that you apply for citizenship there's two questions that are asked the question number one have you lived in the united states in the last five years have you lived here for at least two years and say seven months, right? So more than half, that's okay. one question. So, and it's your burden and you have to keep track of all your days and you, and it's literally just math. They can't yeah. look past it. They can't fuck around with it. It's just math. So total more than half. More than half. Don't cut it too yeah. close. Yeah. Number two, in the last five years, have you had any trips outside the United States for more than six months? Got you it. don't want you don't want that. 
Got it. So keep total and keep like no more than six months at a time. And yeah. and we're good. And you're good. Okay. Got it. Thank you. That's it for me. Bye, Thank, you. Appreciate it. Buddy. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. Johnny is here. What do you say, Johnny? I can't hear you. Hi. There he is. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Uh, How are you? I'm good. So I have a question. Uh, you helped me get my green card uh, in 2020. So <laughs> thank you very much. So I just wanted to know under the three years rule, if I'm eligible now, because uh, I got the green card in uh, September of 2020, but I have been outside the country on four different occasions for a month at least. Uh, I traveled in December 2020, traveled in uh, December 2021, December 2022, and then December 2023. Okay, so, so you, you want to apply on the three-year rule, right? Yeah, so I just want to know, because somebody was telling me when you travel out on the, I mean, and you stay up to a month or less than a month, they, they calculate like you spend like two months outside the U.S. So no, it's days, it's days. So the question is, on the day you apply for citizenship, Mm -hmm. Three year, three years is one thousand ninety five. One thousand ninety five days. So the question will be: Have you spent at least five hundred and five hundred and say fifty days in the United States? If you only have three trips of a month each, you're totally fine because that's ninety days. Okay. I mean, uh, sorry, say that again. So, how many trips have you had in the last three years? Three, four. Four. Okay. Trip yeah. number one. Trip number one. How long were you gone? Uh, thirty days. Trip number two. About twenty nine days. Trip number three. About thirty days. Thirty days. And trip number four. About twenty nine days. Okay, so we'll just call this one hundred and twenty days to make it easy, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is. Have you been so 1095 is how many days in three years? There's 1095 days, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to spend half that time, so point times 0.5. You have to spend 547 days in the United States at a stretch. No, all added up, not, no, not okay, all added up. So you're at 120. This is a 547, so you're not even close, you're totally fine, okay. You only have 120 days. You could go all the way up to 547 as long as none of them, as long as none of them are more than six months, you're fine. Okay. Thank you. That's that's my question. All right, Johnny. See you, buddy. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, all right. Sounds like Johnny's gonna become a citizen and shit. Let's talk to Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey Jim, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, can I get off camera? Oh, it's Thursday. We made it all the way to the 28-minute mark without someone wanting to be off camera. Usually on Thursday, <laughs> usually on Thursday, no one wants to be on camera. Go ahead, Brian. Dang, Go ahead. I'm no the problem. first person to be off camera. Oh, Jim, first good. of all, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, uh, Jim, I'll give you uh, a little background about my case. Uh, so uh, in 2015, my adoptive mom petitioned for me. She filed did, for me and did, I won. Who did? My mm -hmm. adoptive mom. Your adoptive mom. Okay, so your yes, mom's a U.S. She, citizen? Yes, but uh, she adopted me. Uh, How old were you when you got adopted? Uh, I was back in Uganda, and the process started when I was uh, still, I was 15, I think, but okay. it was completed when I was over 16. Okay, so U.S. citizen adopts someone from Uganda when they're 15 turning 16 yes well okay. but uh she filed an i-130 and then it was denied because? in 2016. Wow. um uh, she didn't have uh, sufficient evidence and uh she just abandoned the case we she abandoned the case well which was it did she not have enough evidence or did she abandon the case uh we our house back in uganda caught fire so we lost a whole bunch of stuff and i mean hmm. So we lost a bunch of evidence. So that, were you an were you an orphan or were your parents still alive? Uh my my mom died and uh, I don't know where my I last saw my dad when I was like six years. So you were an orphan? Yes. Okay. So this US citizen, how does she know about you? How'd she know you? How did how are you connected? 
Ah, uh, so uh, she, uh, we grew up. She grew up close to my grandma, who raised me, and uh, she was very close to my grandma. And uh, my grandma was ailing, and she, uh, they were close friends. So out of that friendship, she, she decided to do it for my grandma. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, in 2017, I applied for a B1 B2 visa, and then it was denied. Mm -hmm. Then I went back and applied for a B1, B2 visa again in 2018. I was coming for a conference and uh, it was approved. And then I came in November 2018. Okay. Um, um, uh, in 20, uh, I mean, when I came, I applied for asylum. Uh, but at the, at the border, I sort of withheld the information about my mother my adoptive mother petitioning for me but wait time out time out time out so okay so you're saying that at cbp they asked you if anyone's ever filed an immigrant visa petition for you and you didn't tell them yeah i uh i withheld that information but i later told the truth later later when yesterday no, 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 no. During the uh, before I was admitted into the U.S. Okay, like so I admitted to the, hold on, 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 hold on. So I went thirty gets abandoned. Uh, not a lot of records. B one B two is applied for, denied. B one B two is granted by the State Department for you to attend a conference. And when you landed on the plane, where did you go through CBP? Uh, in uh, in Seattle. So you land in Seattle. And they start asking you all this stuff and they say, Hey, did anybody ever file an immigrant visa petition for you? You say no. Then how did you come to tell the truth? Like what happened? Did, did, did they already know that you were lying? I mean, well, I'll take that as a, I'll take what, that as a yes. That's what I thought. They figured, yes. they figured that shit out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So did they let you in? Yeah, they let me in on. Uh, did they? Did they? Did they give you like a typed up statement, line by line, of what they said and what you said? Uh no, really. They just uh, he just stamped something in my passport. No, no extension of stay. No change of status. And no, no something. No, I don't remember the other thing. No adjustment. No change of status. No extensions. Yes. Okay. So. Um, when I got here, I filed for asylum in 2019. So after after you passed CBP and you're here? Yes. Okay. How long after you arrived did you apply for asylum? Uh, it was after about six months, I should say, because I got here in November and then I filed in May. And what was the basis of your asylum claim? Uh, political persecution. Back in Uganda? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, in 2022, June, I met my wife. And then uh, we dated and uh, we dated for a year and then got married last year in 2023. Okay. So um, we submitted the package. I got a lawyer and then we, submit, we, we filed concurrently in um, September. Last no, year, no interview on the asylum. The asylum case never went anywhere. No, there's no interview. Okay. And then uh, my interview was scheduled, and um, it was scheduled for January uh, 11. So we attended the interview. It was, it was pretty smooth. I told the officer everything. I told him about my situation at the, at the uh, CBP, at the entry. Then I told him about my mother petitioning for me, and then like it was denied. And then, yeah, I also told him about my asylum. But I mean, the following day, my I-130 was approved, but the I-485 I is still pending. So I don't yeah. know, did I, did I like need a waiver for Probably. everything? Cause it's a complicated case. I, not, but not, I talked to the lawyer. I, I don't think it's complicated. I don't think that's the problem. I think that, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if there's a transcript of your interaction with CBP. They do record a lot more now than they did probably back then. Um, it depends. I mean, the, the CBP officer lets you in, so that's a good sign. Um, I don't know. I think I think that 
I'm not surprised they approved it. So the I-130 means they believe the marriage, but they think there's something about your case that makes you perhaps an admissible. So I, I would say, based on what you've told me so far, maybe a, a 35, 40% chance you're going to need a waiver. Okay, so... Uh, did, your lawyer, I, did, your lawyer, did your lawyer do a FOIA on the case that your adopted mom filed and on CBP? Uh, my, no, because uh, for the case with my mom, she pretty had, uh, she pretty much had everything. Uh. The denial and the uh, uh, little evidence that she submitted at the time. And, but then for the CBP, we did not, we did not think about it. And she did not think about it. But she told me that I could, I could tell the interviewing officer in the, uh, during the interview, like what happened then. Always, you got to tell the truth. Since I'm, since I'm being truthful then about everything then I might yeah, I think like I think a one out of three chance you're gonna I mean I get here's what I would say if you had told if you'd called me before your interview I would say one out of three chance now that they've approved the I-130 but not the 45 that means they're looking at the inadmissibility they're probably requesting the CBP file and so then I would say it's probably 50 50 that you're gonna need a, a misrepresentation waiver so long and the short of it is, I would have your, I would be working on the hardship stuff now. Okay. So, uh, should I wait for them to first request for it? In you have to, a RFE you, you have to, I can mail it. You have to, to wait. Okay. You have to wait. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, that was Thanks Brian. Let us know how it goes. Interesting case. Okay. I will, I will, but hey, you're saying buddy. it's not very complicated. Uh, me, I would, I would say, uh, well, I would say it's sort of complicated. Yeah. So when I write the waiver, I should, uh, in case they request for it, I should include everything from the petition from my mom petitioning for me. And then... no, not all that stuff. The waiver, the waivers. All, I mean, one is if, if I were your lawyer and you get requested to make a waiver, the first argument I would, and I would today try to get the CVP records because the problem is you're shooting in the dark. You don't know what that officer said about what you said about your yeah. entry. Like they could have made you out to be a liar or they could have made you out to be not a big deal. That's why the CBP FOIA is so important. Okay. Um, so if I'm your lawyer, the first thing, the first line of attack is we don't need a waiver because I didn't do anything wrong. I was honest with the officer. And then the, but then the real shooting match on the waiver is whether it's be a hardship for your spouse for you to be deported. So if she's not from Uganda, if she's never lived in Uganda, if she doesn't look like people in Uganda, if she doesn't speak whatever language they speak in Uganda, you know, that, and, and if she's going to suffer psychological harm or emotional harm or, or economic harm, if she has to go live in Uganda with you, or if you go and she doesn't, that's what hardship's all about. That's what the waiver's all about. Nobody oh, cares yeah. about nobody cares about the the adopted mom's case. They care about the hardship. So, like for me, if if I was working on this case from the get go, back when you first started talking to a lawyer after you first got married, I would have said, "Hey, Mrs. U.S. Citizen, would you be sad if Brian got deported? Yeah, would you experience hardship?" I would have started working on the hardship way back then because it's not too much of a guess that you're probably going to need a waiver. So I would have had like a psychologist involved early, a physician involved, you know, figuring out what, you know, maybe she has special medical issues or stuff that might be exacerbated. Maybe she has asthma or, or depression or whatever. If she has to go live in Uganda away from the rest of her family so that she can be with you, I would have been building that case back when you filed the I-130. So that you have, so that you have a whole year or two, I don't know how long your case has been pending. You have all that time to build that case because you don't want to be building the case now like oh shit i need the waiver i better start scrambling to get the evidence right that's why you start yeah. way back then okay i see and okay. you just you just gave me a video topic for tomorrow so thank you for that <laughs> you're welcome jim but thanks uh, brian see you buddy let me know again, okay thank you too okay i will i will all right bye thank you bye all right, that was Brian. Let me knock him out. There we go. And we will talk to USA. Are you driving? Are you driving USA? No. Okay. Here we go. What's up, buddy? Oh, hi, see, man. Now, How you doing? 
Now everybody wants to get off camera. Oh, my buddy Hero's here. I'm going to have to talk to Hero in a minute. All right, go ahead, USA. Uh, hey, Jim. Uh, remember uh, I called you before and I have uh, told you about my case briefly? Uh, no. That I, no. I came no, on I have, I have 20 people tell me about their case every day. So the answer to your question is no. <laughs> So I, I, you know, briefly, I came on a G1, um, a change of status to F1, and then after a year, I got married. If you know, you do remember. No. And then, uh, you know, and then um, uh, my work permit, uh, it's outside of processing time, and uh, I'm just uh, waiting on them. So, uh, so you know, after uh, on the 24th of December, I called. Um, the USAIS, the contact center, and they told me that uh, it's cause of over a workload and nothing related to your case. Um, that's why it's taken forever. When, what's their seat date? What's their seat date? Uh, 10th, uh, 10 February, 2023. That's not bad. What, so, what field so, office, if you had an, if you had an interview, what field office would it be at? Indianapolis. Oh yeah. So you're probably, I mean, you probably get something. Do you have your work card? No, I don't. Why? Well, I, I don't know. Were it's you out of status? Of were you were you out of status when you filed or you're still in F1? I was pending status. It was not granted the F1. Oh, I remember this. What you you yeah, I remember this. So what were you trying to change to, or what was the deal? Yeah, you were so, out of status. I remember this. You were out of status. You keep saying it was pending. It wasn't pending. You, in from the way that they view things, you were out of status. So that's why your case is taking longer. They want to see if you got married just to get a green card, and they they they're waiting to see if they can wait to uh, see if you get divorced and not have to give you a green card. Yeah. So so what basically happened? Like today, I called USAIS the fourth time in a month. Because why? They told why do you keep me, calling them? Why do you keep calling them? Because first, it's outside of processing time, and you know, I feel like, well, it's my right to call them and say, and say, hey, why? Where is my work permit? Okay. You know. So now, now we're talking about rights. We're talking about rights. Okay. You want to call and complain about your work permit? What? What's your question for me? So my question for you is like, what do you think? Like, is that is that bad? Does it look bad? Uh, I don't think they hold it against you for calling over and over. I just think it's a waste of time. Yeah, I, I also like notice that they don't have answers for anything. Like they just they, and oh, they were think? aggressive. Oh, you just figured that out today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they were aggressive too. Like in their answers, like I said, she told me, uh, "Well, there is nothing updated," and I said, uh, "Where will be any time frame for the delays?" And then she gets so aggressive over the phone. She was like, "Oh." she was talking so fast and then after that i did not get a lot of what she said what she said but then i said okay thank you very much and I are you saying it. are you saying that are you saying that your work card is out of pro normal processing times or the green card itself because 11 months isn't that long the work card yeah okay all right well let us know how it goes okay yeah but i'm saying like do you think jim is that is it looking bad for me i told you what i think I think that right. I think Thank that they much, I think man. they think I think they think you're desperate for a green card and that you married this person to get a green card and so they're going to try to wait you out that's what I think. So how can I prepare myself? Get ready for your interview. Make sure you're cool don't don't piss your spouse off. Make sure you're both practicing. Make sure you're developing more evidence. Spend your time spend your time on things you can control, not things you can't control. Okay, perfect. Thank you man. Really appreciate it. See you, bud. Hey, everyone's laughing about old Shabazz. Um, you guys may recall that Shabazz called the ICE attorney asking, why are you trying to deport me? And um, one time back in the day, Jennifer and I had a client who was facing deportation, and he did something even worse. He had his kids email the government attorney who was trying to deport him. So he gave his kids, like little kids, like 14 and 15, this DOJ attorney 
email address so that they could bother him and ask him not to deport their daddy. How do you think that went over? And I bring that up today because we got a call, or we got an email from a U.S. attorney on one of our lawsuits up in Washington. Our client, without telling us, called the U.S. attorney. That sounds like our friend, the Uber driver down in Houston, does it not? And the U.S. attorney did what she was supposed to do, which is when you're when you know someone is represent when you're an attorney and you know someone's represented by counsel, you can't talk to that person without their lawyer. So she said she alerted us, and of course we called them and yelled at them and said you can't do that, right? So whether you're my client or not or anybody's client, don't ever call the lawyer for the other side. And yeah, Stephen Stephen's got it. Ex parte, that's called. That's right. No ex parte communications. And while I'm at it. Don't call the lawyer and also don't call the judge. Don't ever call the judge. Hero is back. What do you say, Hero? He's got his hair cut and everything. Hey, nice to be seen again, Jim. How you doing, buddy? Very good. What's uh, going on? I'm sorry we, we had, we talked about the, I want to hear too about my wife. Yeah. I was yeah. really, really, really busy. Like I've been moving over states everywhere. So now I'm ready to file to my wife. Okay. U.S. citizen, active duty United States military. Yep. We take go. But but I need to file to my wife on like February 20. Not now. For some reason, I I can talk to you by mail about that. Yeah, just email me. You know how to get a hold of me. You got my email. Yeah. So I need so actually my commanding officer here doesn't like my wife to be overseas. Mm -hmm. Every day I go to work in the base, I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. They give me like military lawyer for free, and I say oh, I don't trust nobody. I, Jim is here. <laughs> so that's that's why your hair is shorter because you're in the military now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, my, well, my um, citizenship was the easy, easy, easy process of seeing here, like. When you go to the office with a uniform, ah, they treat you like, uh, I can't explain that. <laughs> yeah, like never do do fingerprint before file application. That's never happened before. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, good. Well, um, just shoot me an email. We'll get we'll get going whenever you're ready. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I'm I'm very sure I'm ready on February 20. Okay. Uh, in email, I'll explain for you why. Uh, yes. I'm trying to get this done because I'm about to get deployed. Yeah. Well, why are you waiting until February? I mean, shoot me an email. We can talk about it. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say it here, but yeah, yeah, it's fine. Shoot me email. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank yeah. you, Jim. Later, yeah. man. Uh, somebody's asking for the yeah, no complaining whoopee tech about the waiting room being full. Gabrielle's asking, what's the EOI or website to find out if there's removal proceedings? Do this, Gabrielle. Um, I'll put in the phone number right now. So this is the 1-800 number. You can put in the A number and you can see if you have a court date. Um, there's the 1-800 number, Gabriellis. Uh, you can call EOIR and see what's what. All right. Ahmed's in the house. What's up, Ahmed? Hey, Jim. Thank you very much for doing all. Uh, for sure. for us. Yeah. Uh, it has been the third day I was waiting to get the chance to talk to you. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Sorry it took um, so long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I came to U.S. 2021, September, after the collapse of Afghanistan. Uh, originally, I'm a, a special um, immigration visa eligible, and mm -hmm. I applied, applied to that April 2020, and I immediately, like, the fastest COM approval came to me and then submitted I-360, I think, and then that was also approved September, October 2021. Yeah. So the time that I was in in US, we entered US under parole uh, status. Uh, I submitted uh, the change of status. The, there was a rule came that uh, as soon as you got the I three sixty approval, so you can you can change your status. So I submitted that in September twenty twenty two, September twenty four twenty two. So we received the interview appointment. And uh, it was in February 8, 2023. We are getting close to one year this February 8. 
So since our interview, my family was ex uh, exempted from interview. They just interviewed me and everything was fine. But we haven't heard anything from, from USCIS in nothing. They, no, don't know, they don't know what to do. Yeah, and so I contacted them twice. One uh, inquiry was sent uh, because of uh, I haven't received, I said I haven't received my green card, uh, May 22nd, 23. They re re replied back to me October, sometime like that after a few days, give me 90 days time to wait. If not, then put another inquiry. I put the second inquiry uh, October, and then they gave me, hey, this is not because of you, and th this is uh, because of the backlog we have. We will make sure to process it as soon as we can, and uh, so wait for another six months. <laughs> so I'm still waiting, but uh, it's getting more. Um, I think uh, uh, I, I thought to get get on the call to you and uh, hear about your what you prefer, what you recommend to do, and what's the upcoming steps. So how long ago was, when did you actually file the I-360? Like, what's the receipt date? How old can we say that it is? I think it's many years, right? I-360 was filed in August 2021. When you were still like, in Afghanistan? Near, yeah, near to yeah. 10 days that Afghanistan was collapsed or eight days before yeah. Afghanistan collapsed. Uh, in October, did you, I think, October 8th you, or something, I received the uh, approval. When did you arrive in the United States? September 2nd, 2021. And then, what the heck? Hold on. how that happened? I don't know how that happened. Um, okay, so um, when did you apply? When did you file the 45? Uh, September 24, 2022. And when you had your interview in February last year, where was your interview? Minneapolis. Ah, giddy up. Let's sue him. Yeah, we'll sue him. Send me, send me all your stuff. I'll tell you what to do. You need oh, to sue him. If you, I, we'll, we'll sue him for the whole family to get you, you guys, your green cards. Yeah. Uh, so what's? Uh, I left a message, a call for for one of your team members uh, okay. two days ago. Also, I will send another email. Should I send that to info at hacking? Oh. Send it to send it to the gym at hackingimmigrationlaw.com because okay. that's that's me. That way let I'll me get that. <laughs> let me get that noted noted here. Yeah. So, so J I M J I M J I M. Yeah. Then yeah. the rest. Uh, yeah. Then the same. Yeah. So that I have. Thank you very much. And I know that there's a lot of people, same as me, and people yeah. who filed at the same time frame that with me. Even their interview is not scheduled while their fingerprint was just one of the member of their fingerprint was uh, scheduled so since well, i don't i don't know i don't know for sure it will work but i think it will work so we could try you and then if it works for you then we'll try it for other people yeah uh, since i'm active in helping immigrants here since, since the time that i i landed in the us and helping yeah. them with them uh, with english and these voluntarily so there's a lot of cases especially in minneapolis minnesota yeah, uh, I hear that there are some other states processing, especially Afghan and Iraqi SIV cases are like within 15 days or two maximum two months or three months. The green cards are coming. So, and, and Ahmed, I don't want you to tell me too much, but it would be fair to say that the reason you were SIV qualified was because you helped our troops. Um, yes. And, yeah. Yes, so, sir. So we question. can put all that in the complaint and make you very sympathetic. I think this is good. And also my son, my son is a freshman at the University of Minnesota, so I'll, I'll probably be up there in a couple months and maybe we can meet. And wow, maybe that's I'll... very good. I would be very, very happy yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Like, That'd be great. Can you can you let me know so that I can yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can come and meet you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Send me an email. And, and you know, like if, if it makes sense, I can come talk at the mosque or whatever. So yeah, whatever you just email me and we'll get started. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking for this thing to make a to to uh, I can manage uh, an event, call uh, these Afghan and uh, some Ukrainian immigrants. We yeah. have a community which I'm active and I'm I'm playing the main role there. So Great. I can make that gathering and uh, the, the same time that you are coming so that Great. you can talk with the rest of the people. I know that uh, the same pain as I, I have, there is hundreds of other people. I would like that very much and it would give me an excuse to go to Minnesota and see my son. So let's do it. Yep. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. See you, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Aslama. All right. All right. Now, someone is here and they say they are dying to sue the government. Well, how could we not talk to them? Hello, dying to sue the government. Hello. Can you hear me? What's up? Yeah, what's up? Hey, so um, 
so okay so i so my wife is stuck in manila right we have a cr1 ir1 visa going on um we're not at the stage yet to to file like a mandamus against the embassy yeah. but that's what i would like to do yeah in the near future yeah um what what are you like, what do you think is the likelihood of a, of a successful lawsuit against the embassy? Manila sucks, but walk me through the timeline. When did you file the I-130? Oh, so for me, I'm nowhere close to that. I'm only six months out. I filed it six, six months six ago. months, Six months from USCIS or what? Yeah, I'm still in USCIS. I'm just oh, stressing yeah. out for possible future issues. So you're going to be probably a year at your U.S. citizen? Yes. A year at USCIS and then two years from Manila. They're just slow as shit. They're, they're, I think they're literally the slowest embassy. So you think I'm going to be waiting for an interview for two years? Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't seem reasonable to me. Me neither, but the judges all say that it is. And really? Joe, so Biden, Joe, we, Biden, Joe Biden says that it is. So even if we, we do a mandamus case, it's not going to work? <clears throat> The last one I did was many years ago, and it was where someone had already been waiting two years, and they fought us tooth and nail. It took us another year of litigating, but it did work. Oh, wow. So that was three years. Oh, wow. Because recently I, I know that uh, people were going through in a few months, and they just kind of stopped processing. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see. But just, just you know, keep watching the show, and you're, we're – you know, we have to get through USCIS first, and then you got to, you're going to, I mean, the earliest we could ever sue Manila would be 18 months. Okay, so it wouldn't work like trying to sue in like October or doing like a class action lawsuit or anything like that? Definitely not doing a class action. I've tried that many times. They're not fun. And number two, no. no. The, so, so in the old days, I would put USCIS and the State Department together. I think that's very fair to do because I think that you don't care which agency is handling it. You just want to pay your fees and get your wife here. You don't care if it's USCIS, TSA, CBP, State Department. You don't give a shit. You just want your wife here, right? So I think it's okay to throw everybody in there. But the judges now say that you have to look at how much time the agency that had the case, that 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 has the case now, how long did they have it? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, from what I check, check, oh. check all the chat boards and see what everybody's saying. But I think Manila is 18 to 24 months. I really do. That's, that's crazy. I, I mean, all right. It's no way to run a country, but I mean, right now it's something political more than anything. Biden, Biden just isn't putting any resources in, in making things go faster since Trump broke it all. Okay. All right, man. All right. Thanks so much for the call. All right. Thanks. Bye buddy. He's dying to sue the government, but he's got to wait. He's got to wait. Speaking of the wait, the wait is almost over. What's up, the wait? Hi, Jim. How you doing? Um, I'm great. How are you? Good. What's up? I am super excited. I was um, about to go to bed. Um, it's 2 o'clock <laughs> here, 2 in the morning. And, um, you know, I was like, just want to see what the status is on my case. And I checked and it says that uh, on January 19th, we scheduled an interview for your form N-400 application. Nice. So I'm just going to be waiting for that uh, notice to come in. And I, I'm guessing it's probably going to come to your office first because we are overseas right now. Okay, good. Um, now that, you know, I know that it's coming, do you know an idea like how soon because i have to make travel arrangements yeah which field office um i'm actually this is a good question i don't know if it's going to be the norfolk or uh fairfax because we're in virginia yeah i'm not sure which office um let me see they used to have do you want to tell me your zip code or do you not want to tell me your zip code two three three two three Hold on. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Two, three, three, two, three, two, three. Yeah. Norfolk. Okay. So Norfolk is not as busy as Fairfax. I mean, most almost almost every time you're talking four to six weeks. Okay. Four to six weeks, and you you don't have the online portal. You don't have you you can't log in and see it. Unfortunately, it, it's telling me that I it, I just can't. 
for some reason I won't I'm not able to like get into my um maybe because you're out of the country anymore. maybe because you're out of the country probably yeah yeah no I would think anytime soon so it should be good okay that's very exciting I'm almost when, there when were you when, 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 when were you planning on coming back well I was not expecting to come back for like another three to four months like I was waiting gonna wait for my um kids school break because you know we're in Bahrain right now and we're like for summer we're gonna go back home mm. but it looks like I'm gonna be coming back sooner rather than later all and right cool got here I I filed Are it you... in um October that was my question so that that's good that's a good sign so that means they want to approve it yeah, that's great. I have one more question. It's for sure. my sister. She filed, uh, my older sister, who is a U.S. citizen, filed for my younger sister uh, for I-130 in 2005. And she has, yeah, like she has not heard anything since then. Well, that's not good because they're working on cases from 2007, which means that she they probably processed it and she might have missed some communication from them. So she needs to look into that case right away. Okay. That, right. case should be, that case should be over. That's what I'm thinking. Like she doesn't have like, you know, her EAD or anything. So I've been telling her, like my uh, mom is actually a client of yours right now too. So I yeah. told her, I'm like, you need to, you need to hire hacking immigration law. So we can yeah. get those results for her as well. Yeah. Just have them email us. Okay. We'll do. All right. Thank thanks. So have much. a great day. Safe travel. All right. Well, we have 243 people watching the show right now. That's pretty crazy. Um, I really enjoyed being here today with all of you. I might do a show tomorrow. Probably not, though. Um, most likely it's going to be on Saturday, and then we'll get back to it next week. I might not do it till Monday. We'll just have to see. And here's the best way to know when I'm going live again, 314-470-3300. This was an interesting show. We've had some crazy calls this week. Really enjoyed being with all of you. I will be here next time um see somebody just waited asked about n400 at norfolk so she filed in october and her interview is coming up aj so you must be pretty close um i hope you all have a great night i hope to see you all soon um on the next edition of the immigration answer show my name again is jim hacking h-a-c-k-i-n-g hacking immigration law is my firm at immigration hacking is my TikTok. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell your friends all about it. And we'll see you.